One of the cooler features in Death Valley National Park are its slot canyons. Now, when you think of slot canyons, you probably think of places in southern Utah, northern Arizona, where these narrow, tight canyons have been cut into sandstone. Uh, and those, those slot canyons are absolutely spectacular. But really, we can get slot canyons in any place where we have rocks that are kind of the same, more or less homogeneous throughout, um, where we have a steep gradient and where flash floods occur. And here in Death Valley, those ingredients all come together to form some magnificent slot canyons like the one I have behind me here. So you can see this slot canyon is cut into uh, these alluvial gravels. So these, these past deposits from flash floods have come down, filled part of the valley, and then more recent flash, flood, flash floods have cut through those deposits to form these narrow uh, slot canyons like the one you see behind me here. So again, we need steep topography and a steep gradient, which Death Valley has in abundance. It's among some of the steepest slopes and mountains uh, in the world. We need rocks of fairly uniform types, which we have such as these conglomerates and breaches here. Uh, if you have rocks of different hardnesses and softness, then you end up widening out valleys where the rocks are soft, but you need rocks of sort of uniform composition to make these slot canyons. And then of course you need a climate that produces these violent uh, but short-lived uh, thunderstorms where the water can funnel into the canyons and then the energy of that water on the steep slope can cut down. So let's head up this little one here uh, just to give you a little sense of these things. And what's great about slot canyons is you just never know what's around the next bend. The sort of sense of exploration is kind of neat. Here we have some rocks that have fallen in and sort of these are sometimes called chalk stones forming a little bit of an obstacle in the canyon here um, some other blocks that have fallen down sometimes you have to turn sideways to get through in some of these canyons uh, and here we have a more formidable obstacle two large chalk stones forming a constriction in the canyon looks like there's a couple places to get through uh, but this is some of the fantastic landscapes you can explore here in Death Valley National Park. This is Badwater Basin. This is the lowest point in North America, about 282 feet below sea level. It's right here in the middle of Death Valley National Park. Um, it's this incredible landscape where you've got the big valley floor, the Badwater Basin, uh, sitting in between these big majestic mountain ranges, the Panamint Mountains, over here to the west, which culminates with Telescope Peak, which is over 11,000 feet tall. So we're looking at vertical relief here of over two miles between the tip of that mountain that's just been dusted by snow a few days ago to this basin down here. If we swing around uh, to the north, seeing the extent of the basin, and then come over here and look to the east, we can see the Black Mountains, this very steep, abrupt mountain front completely devoid of any vegetation. The active faulting has produced the Badwater Basin, dropping the Death Valley Basin down precipitously and forming this very, very low area. All a result of basin and range extension, the crust being stretched east to west, has dropped the valley down while raising the mountains on either side. Let's focus a little bit here on the Badwater Basin and some of the unique features we see here. Uh, one of the things that's, that's typical of these extensional basins are these very flat valley floors. These are called playas. These are essentially uh, big flat bottom valley floors. There's no outlet to the ocean here. Rainfall is incredibly scarce. And so whatever rainfall occurs in the mountains and comes down the canyons ends up going out into the valley here. But under this tremendous heat in this area, the water evaporates, leaving behind these big salt deposits. And you can kind of see the, the cool polygons and really neat salt features that we see here along the valley floor in this playa. Um, really, really cool features here. The temperatures in the Badwater Basin are the hottest in North America and in some cases almost the world. Uh, the highest recorded temperature here has been about 134 degrees Fahrenheit, so exceptionally hot temperatures. And the reason we get such high temperatures here is resulting from the valley itself and its topography. So the hot uh, air 
beats the, the heat of the sun beats down on this area. The hot air tries, ri tries to rise and escape the valley, but it's trapped by these mountains. So it sort of just recirculates, ends up getting heat hotter and hotter and hotter over time. Uh, this area is also really dry because it sits in the rain shadow of a couple of mountain ranges. It sits east of the Sierra Nevadas and a couple of other mountain ranges. So it's incredibly devoid for the most part of much uh, measurable rainfall. They average about, I think, two to three or so inches of rain per year here. So it's incredibly dry. Uh, but again, this playa surface has these salt crystals. These salts are formed by the water that runs off into this area, has dissolved some of the soluble material from the rocks and the mountains. And so the sodium and the chlorine uh, bond together as the water evaporates to form these incredible uh, little salt crystals here. And you can see these big kind of polygons outlined all around here, people heading out uh, onto the Badwater Playa. Um, the other thing we can see here, if we swing around and look to the east, is there's a nice alluvial fan. So these steep mountain fronts, when they get rainfall, it funnels the rain down into these steep canyons. Um, and it, because they're so steep and the water's concentrated, it can move a lot of the sediment. And so as the sediment moves down the canyon, uh, it's moving with a lot of energy. But when it hits the valley floor, uh, it slows down quite a bit and so it drops that sediment load and over time it constructs these sort of fan-shaped deposits we see at the bottom of the canyons. Um, kind of a smaller one here, uh, if we swing around this way we can just start to see uh, the makings of one here. We can see the steep mountain front kind of there below the sun, uh, this more gently sloping alluvial fan and then of course the very flat horizontal surface of the salt playa itself. So fantastic scenery and just really amazing features here at Death Valley. Well Death Valley is definitely a land of extreme contrast. We've got these incredibly rugged steep mountains here on the east side of the Badwater Basin. These are the Black Mountains formed by faulting, pushing the mountains up and dropping the valley down over the last few million years. Uh, and then as we kind of wheel around to the west, we see the extremely flat landscape of the Badwater Basin, this playa, this big dry lake bed uh, that's sitting out here, completely flat and horizontal. So we need, uh, you know, sort of necessitates some sort of landscape feature that fits in between the two. And one of the most distinctive features we see here in Death Valley, and they're common in other places too, but they're really world-class here in Death Valley, are these things called alluvial fans. So at the mouth of these steep, narrow canyons in the mountains, uh, we have these aprons, these fan-shaped aprons of sediment ranging from boulder size over here uh, down to sand and gravel and even smaller particles. All this stuff of, is of course washed down these narrow canyons when there's intense flash floods and rainstorms. The floods carry the material through the canyon, but when it hits the flat desert floor, it drops it. Once all the energy is lost, when it hits this flat level valley floor, all that sediment is deposited here at the front of the mountain uh, to form these in incredible features called alluvial fans. Um, so you can see there's a diversity of sediment sizes in here from boulders down to smaller particles. But as again, as we scan around uh, to the east, you can see out there where it's white, that's all mud and salt. So by the time we've reached there, and that's not even a quarter mile or so from here, uh, these flash floods have lost all their energy and have deposited all their sediment um, up until that point. And, and then from there on out across the flats, it's all just fine mud and salt that precipitates out of this water when it, when it evaporates. Um, one interesting thing about Death Valley is the alluvial fans change from one side to the other. So if you look across to the west to the Panamint Range, uh, we can see that the alluvial fans are much larger. Those alluvial fans are miles from head to toe, uh, much wider uh, and carry an, an enormous amount of sediment. And so those alluvial fans have a lot more drainage area above them. And so they've got a bigger area to, to Ch channel the water and then flush the sediment out into the basin. The alluvial fans here on the east side in the Black Mountains are pretty small. Uh, these things are actually pretty small, uh, maybe half a mile or so 
from the mouth of the canyon down to their toe. And so they're much smaller in extent. And I can kind of explain that a little bit better uh, with this fancy drawing here. So if we look at sort of a simple cross section through Death Valley from the west side to the east side, we've got the Panamint Mountains on the west, the Black Mountains on the east, and here's Death Valley. And the reason why we have these di distinctly different alluvial fans has to do with the faulting. So both of these mountain ranges are abruptly uh, faulted and uplifted on their, uh, on their west sides. So the fault that controls the uplift of the mountains on the west side, creating a very steep mountain front on the west side of the mountains. Over here in the Black Mountains, this is where we are here in Death Valley, we're right up against this extremely steep western front of the mountains. And so the streams don't have a very large catchment area, a very large drainage basin. So the amount of uh, sediment that they, can uh, that they can transport during these big floods is somewhat limited. So we end up with fairly small, short, and steep alluvial fans. Whereas in the Panamint Mountains, the east side of the Panamint Mountains is longer. It's a bigger area. So the flash floods we get here can form these much larger... Uh, aprons of uh, sediment, these alluvial fans, tend to be much larger because the way these mountains are tilted down to the east on each side. So again, spectacular landscapes here in Death Valley. The iconic alluvial fans, which forms uh, a lot of the landscape features around here. And again, just another great feature here in Death Valley.